Hello my friends and welcome to episode 11 of our Football Manager 2022 save with Chelsea. This was our beta save, we're continuing on for one more season uh, while I wait on a custom database for my main save coming out and being ready and whatnot. Uh, I'll keep you updated on that as soon as I know any more. Now, this season started really at the end of last season with Sudby Club World Championship. Now, half the players were on holiday, I registered half of those players which meant we had about 14 players to complete in this entire competition. Whoopsie. Um, I suspect there's bits of bugs with that in regards to that. I've not reported it because I'm kind of hoping it's a one-off or they've noticed it. But it's something that I will keep an eye on if we come into the Club World Championship again down the line. So the first game in that was really just a little bit of fun. Um, we tried a new system. A system that's a variation of the tactic I've been trying with Newcastle. It's not the same. Uh, it won't be the same because we don't have the same players to make it work. Um, and we won 9-0 against a team from Morocco, Wydad Casablanca. We then played Chivas, we won 2-0 in that game, Gareth Bale scoring both the goals. And then we go on to what is technically classed as this season. So, you know, I think Lukaku ended up finishing four goals last season and then came in this one. We beat uh, Liverpool 3-0 after extra time. We really should have beat them in normal time, but hey-ho. And then we played Real Madrid in the semi-finals. We lost 3-2 in a game that we absolutely dominated. We battered Real Madrid and fitness just caught up with us. And then you've seen that again in the Bayern game. We just couldn't get going in a Bayern game. And again, it was purely fitness. We just had nothing left in the tank. We then had a bunch of friendlies. And then we lost 2-1 in the Community Shield to Liverpool. Now, when I was looking at when I was going to do the transfer window review, I picked West Ham purely because, one, West Ham are a good club, and two, it's kind of the first Premier League game. The next game's choice was Tottenham or Liverpool. We've done a lot of Liverpool recently. In fact, in the last two episodes, we're both Liverpool. And, <coughs> excuse me, I just felt West Ham would be a nice change of a uh, um, feel. You know, we could try this new tactic out uh, in a competitive competitive environment because as much as I've tried it out in the Club World Championship as much as I've tried it in the Community Shield and it's ran in pre-season friendlies none of these games are actually overly competitive you know nobody's really quite going for it so as much as I'm content with the tactic I think it still needs some tweaks it's not exactly there yet um, so I will show you that in the next episode which will be the West Ham game um, this episode was supposed to be yesterday and I apologize for that I just was Excuse me, I just wasn't up to recording it, so I'm recording this Wednesday, it will go up Wednesday night, and then we'll get uh, the West Ham game recorded directly after this for tomorrow's episode, and we can hopefully just go back to back to back to back and finish this series and get on with our main save. So, transfers, ins and outs. It's been an interesting one. Do we have any coming in at the end of this time? We do. Glad I double-checked that. So, on the outs, we'll start with the outs. We got... Uh, Dijon Sterling, we managed to get a couple million for him. We got rid of Kepa. Hallelujah. 20 million Pep Guardiola paid for him. City finished fifth last year. And Pep's gone on a spending spree. They've brought in Haaland, they've brought in Kepa. I don't know who else they've brought in. But they've brought in a number of good, good players. Uh, Kepa did make me laugh. I'm delighted to get 20 million for uh, Kepa. We also managed to sell Trevor Shibola to Brighton for 15.5 million. It's not quite as much as I wanted for a homegrown talent. And... I think it's between him and Christensen, I'd have preferred to have kept Shabla. But I was going to sell one of them, and it was whoever had the interest that we were going to sell. Uh, on the ends of this page, we do bring in back Timori. He's came back to the club for 65 million, rising to 72 million. Now that's, I think, 30 million up front, some installments, and then some just little add ons. It's a bit more than what I wanted to pay for him, but it felt it was very, very important to bring a good centre back in. But the benefit with Tomori is he is homegrown at the club, which takes stress off keeping players like Shabla and Christensen because we already have a player sitting in the first team that very much does that job. So now we get on to the real stuff. So we've got a lot of outs here. So we've covered Shabla, Lewis Baker, Rudiger, obviously, away on a free, Noon, Castillo, Sam McClellan just broke in all the way on free. A few loans, uh, Charlie Webster away on loan. Nathan Patterson are loaned out just because we've got Babu there as well. I felt getting him in game time was a priority as you're in. You know, if I was to stay at this club, and that's the thing, if I was to stay at Chelsea for, you know, five, ten years, I would want Nathan Patterson getting game time and developing. Uh, Ian Madsen away on loan. 
Babaraman, we got three million for him from Fenerbahce. Jamie Cumming is away on loan. Harry Lawrence away on loan. We managed to get six million for Mazinga, sixteen million for Emerson. We've got some money on a loan fee for uh, Timo Werner. We did have a deal with Celtic Arsenal. He turned it down. PSG have an optional fee of sixty-nine million, and there's some instalments after that, and you know some bonuses after that, which takes up to I think about eighty million total, including the two point uh, three million fee. So again, if I was to stay here long term, I'd be accepting that deal in the hope that they done it. So I've tried to think like that. Michael Baz away for a couple hundred thousand, and we managed to get eight mil or just under eight million for Ethan Ampadu, who I just didn't think was good enough. So that brings us to the ends. Now we've already seen Timore. We got Kylian Mbappe for a free. I mentioned him previously. His contract is absolute horse nonsense. But you know. You don't turn Kylian Mbappe down on a free if you can get him on a horse nonsense contract. We can always renew his contract and get slightly less horse nonsense. He is on a fairly low wage for what you would expect to pay for him at £205,000 a week. And of course he's an absolutely top, top quality player. We've got Taliso in on a free as well. Going to be a backup midfielder. I actually prefer Billy Gilmore now that I've got them both at the club. Which might sound a bit crazy. But Taliso will come in, do a decent job as a backup. And, you know, that's all we want him for. We've got Nicolas Sewell, a direct replacement for Antonio Rudiger. Slightly better in the air, which is great for us um, from corners, because unless it's patched corners uh, since full release, because I've not played a huge amount of games since full release because I've been doing the pre-season stuff, then Sewell, Sewell will be absolute monstrous in those corners with the jump and reach and better heading. A big upgrade on what we had previously in both those stats um, for across our defence. And then we've got Moussa Dembele from Man City for £12.5 million. Now so he had moved to Man City for 18.75. They transfer listed on with finishing fifth, as I said. And I just wanted another backup striker, to be honest. We're trying to sell um, Batshuayi. Hopefully we run a profit over that kind of deal. But again, Dembele provides homegrown status in the country. So that's all our ins and outs in terms of that. In terms of staff, we had a few outs and a few ins. So our ins are... Burton, Duran and Berzani as scouts, both very good scouts here, um, and Zanelli came in as a performance analyst, I can't remember why we had to replace our performance analyst, but we did, but he is almost perfect, I've never seen stats as good as a performance analyst and football manager in my life. Uh, so that's just a very, very quick transfer review episode guys, so please, if you're enjoying this, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and I'll hopefully catch you all next time for the first game of the season against West Ham.